Hello and welcome to another First in Theatre training video, and today I'll be talking to you about palettes, what they are and how you can use them to speed up your work when using ETC EOS. Here you can see our usual programming view with QStack shown in the top left, our channel view on the right hand side of the screen, and in the bottom left we have our colour palettes in a direct select window. So what is a palette? Who direct and how do I select? I don't know! A palette is a way of storing lantern data into their particular types, such as colour, so they can be recalled later. Palettes are really useful when building cues and effects, as they can be used as an initial reference point, meaning that if you're using a moving light for example, you can easily select a gel colour, beam size and a position on stage with all this information really easily displayed in the tombstones. Palettes differ to presets, as they focus on individual elements of a lantern's programming, whereas a preset can be used to record everything that a lantern is doing. This also includes any palettes a lantern may be using within a queue, but we shall take a look at presets in another video. So what types of palettes are there? Looking at the virtual keyboard, we can see there are four different palette types in ETC EOS, which are Intensity, Focus, Colour and Beam. Let's start off by taking a look at Intensity palettes. Intensity palettes are a great way to create easy to read reference labels for units such as house lights and work lights, which then display really clearly in the channel view. If we look at our direct select window in the bottom left hand corner, we can click on the word colour palette to change what is displayed in this window. So for now let's click intensity palette, and as you can see we already have four intensity palettes saved on this show file. Let us quickly patch in a couple of house lights to channel 99 so that we can demonstrate how to record and delete palettes. Now that we've patched these lanterns in, we must follow the usual command line protocol by first saying what you want to change, which on this occasion is channel 99, and then we want to change it by putting it at 60%, like so. Once we've brought the house lights up to a level that works, we can now record an intensity palette. Following the way we used the command line earlier, we can record a palette by typing in the channel number of the house lights, which is 99, followed by record, then intensity palette, and then finally the palette number we want, which will be 99. Once we've done this, we can press enter. Looking again into the bottom left, you can see that our new intensity palette has been recorded. And if we look at the tombstone on the right, you can see that the intensity value has been replaced with the reference for intensity palette 99. Let's label our new palette by typing in intensity palette 99 and then hitting label. We're going to call this HL on so that when we look at the tombstones, it's really easy to see what this channel is doing. Hitting enter to confirm, you can see the reference in the tombstones has changed. So now we have a palette for house lights on, let's make a second palette for house lights off. Following the same pattern as before, we're going to turn channel 99 off, and then we're going to record channel 99 into intensity palette 100 with the label house lights off. You may have noticed that we have two duplicate palettes numbered 999 and 1000. So let us take a look at how to delete them. This process is exactly the same as for deleting groups or queues. When deleting a channel, you want to start the command line with the word delete, followed by what you want to remove. But into practice, we need to type in delete, followed by intensity palette, 999 and 1000. As always, when deleting a palette, group or queue, you're asked to confirm the command and as you can see, the duplicate palettes have been deleted. If we select channel 99 and click the button in the direct select that says house lights on, you can see that we've now bought on our house lights. But Matt, I hear you ask, how do I update a palette if I get told the house lights are too dim? Well Matt, you don't. You stick to your artistic vision not deviating from your path of enlightenment, ignoring the naysayers and building a theatrical legacy, for you are the lighting designer, and you know best. Sorry about that. All you need to do to alter palette 99 is take channel 99, put it to its new intensity, so let's say 80%, and then hit enter. Now we can type in channel 99, update, intensity palette 99, enter. A fun little fact is that if you double click data, 
you can hide the reference labels and it will swap out the reference label shown in the tombstones for a numerical value. So if we look at channel 99, you can see that it now reads 80, whereas just a moment ago it said HL on. This is an easy way to check the values of the pallets in use. When you're done, just simply press data once again to revert back to seeing the reference labels. Moving on from intensity pallets, let's take a look at beam pallets. Beam pallets record information from a lantern's form, which includes zoom and edge values, and also image, which looks at gobos and shutters. In relation to the rig we've been using thus far, today we will only be looking at zoom information, as we have three LED lanterns that can mechanically zoom. If we change the direct select view to look at beam pallets, you can see that I've already created several beam pallets to be used with the ALU zooms. As I select channels 41 through 43, you can see that most of the direct selects light up. This happens to let you know that these pallets work with the units you've currently selected. You can see as I step through the different beam sizes that changes are happening immediately in the visualizer. Beam pallets make changing a lantern zoom even easier than using the moving light controls. The beam pallets are a really useful starting point for you to find a rough beam size that you can build upon to suit the state you are building. I've programmed in these beam pallets in the show file to follow ETC source for fixed lens sizes, whilst also adding in a couple of intermediate steps to make life a little bit easier. Now it's time for a short intermission. Grab yourself a drink, take a break, and we'll see you shortly. One thing to keep in mind when programming pallets is that when you record a new pallet, it will only work for the channels you've programmed it with. So if I use channel 41 to record a pallet, that pallet will only affect channel 41. If I want a pallet to work for all of the LU zooms, we must program pallets by type. By type allows you to use one channel of a certain lantern type to record a pallet that would work for any other channels using the same fixture. So if I were to program a beam pallet by type using channel 41, it would also work for channels 42 and 43, as all units are LEDJ ALU zooms. To show you how this works practically, I'm going to use channel 42 to program a 42 degree beam pallet. So using the moving light controls, I've set channel 42 to a zoom size of 42 degrees, as you can see. And now I'm going to record channel 42 to beam pallet 42 using the same method as earlier. Now that I've done that, when I select channel 41, you can see that beam pallet 42 doesn't light up, and if I click on it, nothing happens. So selecting channel 42 again, we shall update beam pallet 42, but before we hit enter, we should click the by type button found in the soft keys on the bottom right hand side of your screen, and as always, following this with pressing enter. Now that we've updated the pallet, when we select channel 41, you can see that pallet 42 is now lit up. By type also works for colour and intensity, so if you want to make a palette that functions as a shortcut for an intensity for all of your generic lanterns, don't forget to record it by type. You can see if a palette has been recorded by type because they display a small capitalised T in the top left hand corner of each palette in the direct select window. Focus palettes are used to record lantern positions when using moving lights, but as we have no moving lights within our rig, I will save this topic for a future video. If we change the direct selects again to show focus palettes, you can see that I have pre-made ones ready for useful locations on stage. These palettes will always depend on the staging your production is using. I have numbered the focus palettes to reflect their location on stage when using a numerical keypad, which looks something like this when they are side by side. This method works with focus palette 2 being downstage centre and focus palette 8 as upstage centre. Let's move on to colour palettes by changing our direct selects once again. I use these as a quick way to display and select my most frequently used gel colours and by using the by type function I can make sure all of my units show the same gel colour in an identical way. This is really important when using LED units that all have different LED chips and therefore mix colours in very different ways. A fun thing that colour palettes allow you to do is easily use colour gradients using palettes you've already created. I can show you this by turning on our upstage LED buttons. Don't forget that for channels 31 and 36, you need to turn on all of the cells to 100% before they will work. Now all of the units are on and in open white, 
we can start to create a gradient. If we look at colour palette 4 in the top left, you can see that the five colour palettes to the right already create a nice gradient from amber through to peach. We can create a colour gradient in the same way as an intensity gradient, by selecting the channels we want a gradient across, which in this case is 31 through 36, followed by at colour palette 4 through 52, and finally enter. As you can see, we now have a really stunning gradient across the LED bars. This works only with consecutive colour palettes, so it may be worth considering making dedicated colour palettes to achieve these effects, especially if you plan to tweak colours to achieve a smoother gradient. You can copy palettes using the Copy To key, or move them completely by double tapping the Copy To key. There are two ways you can change the colour of automated lanterns using gel colour swatches. You can do this either through the moving light controls and selecting the gel manufacturer followed by the gel colour, but also through recalling gel numbers via the command line, such as putting a lantern into lead 200 by typing in channels 41 through 43 at 3 slash 200 enter. The 3 is the reference number that corresponds to lead filters, as shown in the gel picker found in the moving light controls. The forward slash separates the reference number from that of the gel colour you are after. Once I have selected the gel colour I want to use, I then record a palette by type using the same colour palette number as the gel for easier recall. Colour palettes don't have to be gel colours. You can also mix your own colours using the moving light controls and then save them in exactly the same way. All of the palette types that we've looked at today can be used as part of effects, and effects are what I'm going to be looking at in our next video. So that was a pretty in-depth look at palettes within ETC EOS how to create them and what they can do, but there is always more I can look at in another video. Thank you once again for tuning in, leave your feedback in the comments below, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and I hope to see you in the next one. See you soon.